Welcome to my second video of Vexal Inferno. Today we're gonna delve more into logistics as uh, well as I will show you how to get into the war zone itself. There will really to be some repetition, but repetition is always good. What you want to go is you want to go to one of these area where it says deploy. Before you go there, you want to check your intel. So in order to do that, you need to go to a table that I will find, try to find at least. I think it is in this tent. Maybe it is over here. Here it is. This is the map. It is quite massive and there's a lot of details. Since I'm colonial, I'm on the right side where there is not the blue because the blue is the warden. And you want to check the back line. And here you can see all sorts of symbols. And what we want to look at is the symbols I showed you last session which is the salvage and the refinery. So I happen to see that there is those in the axe head. There are more, like there's more in the north. As you would see here is another refinery and another salvage field. And there's one to the south as well. Don't really know exactly where, but you can find it many salvage yards. Refiners are more limited. And there's a lot to this game, as you can see. So what we wanted to go is what we want to go to Axel. Which was in Godscroft. Now each of these squares is called a region. Each region is kind of its own server. So whenever there's a maintenance, they are region wise, meaning they are in each hex. So you could technically go into another hex and you don't have to worry about the maintenance. There's the region chat, there's the squad chat, there's the regiment for your entire regiment, which is kind of like a bigger thing than that. There's a logistic specific one. There's one for Intel and then there's a Whisper. Now we are in the town hall or the town base in this. Each hexagon has its own town base where you can store and withdraw. Now this game is massive. It's a war simulator, meaning we are only looking at the beginning of the factory line, making things. Like I showed last session, you can make guns, ammo, church, which is respawn points, and so much more. Then this start leads to the front line. And if you want to go to the front line with a vehicle or spawn there, then an advice is to pick a radio because there are watchtowers pinging enemies on the map, but you can't see the enemies updated on the map unless you have a radio. There is gas in this game, so a gas mask and a gas mask meter with advised. And ammo and weapons are also advised with here. Now if I go here, you can see what ammo type it is above the ammo. It says 8mm, which I happen to have for my pistol. There's also other things like wrenches, medpacks, shovels and sledgehammers. We are going to grab a sledgehammer as we are going to do a logistic. Now 
now there should be be mats in here possibly but if there isn't that is fine because there might be in some in the next part where we need to go south as we are gonna head to the garage in the garage is where you make yourself your truck there are three different kind of trucks there's the atlas holder that can only hold scraps there's the r1 holder that is the main most important truck there's the tanker that holds fuels but we're not gonna worry about that we want the most basic one which is the r1 holder and you will see a blueprint but we need bead mats so let's see if we have bead mats here we have a little bit but this is not going to be enough as you need a hundred bead mats for this thing and if you do what i did blueprint spheres because we went back into the garage so if you check the map we can see there are a lot of buildings and there are encampments so we can check the encampments if there's mats there or we can go to the refinery because as we saw before the refinery should have mats as that's where it's being produced now there's only five here but if you have made materials from before it should be saved in here right for a time so I made some B mats yesterday and now I can complete it to get it. Like that. And I have some B mats on me. Of course I'm gonna be very slow. One thing that I will advise, don't walk in the middle of these roads because you will be run over, guaranteed. So what you want to do is you want to stay off the road. There's useful, helpful signs that people have made. And you can upload them so they stay for a long time. This one will stay for 11 days, but you can upload it to make it stay longer. Now we are back at the garage and we have a lot more materials now. So we can store it here for other people to use and then we can do this again. You equip your hammer and you just hammer away. But you can't just put it in the garage. You have it to have on you. I am hammering this truck alone, so the process time for me is kind of slow. If you have friends that you play with, I don't have to make this truck al alone. You can have many many people helping you. And since they are using VMATs, you don't need the 100, you just need a total of 100. So if I had one friend with me, I could have 50 and he could have 50 and we could basically speed up the processing of making this thing. If we had three people, we could have, you know, one could have 34 and the other two could have 33. And so on. That's why there was a lack of a hundred inside the garage before. And that's probably because somebody had some help and then dumped whatever BMATs he had spare into the garage. Uh, 
and it is made. Now we have made the first truck. The most basic and used truck that there is. Now you might want to hop in and press E, but if you press E, you open its inventory and you would see its fuel. It has quite low fuel. You can lock this truck so nobody else can pick it up. That's what happened last video. Or you can squad reserve it, meaning only people inside your squad could use it. Meaning Daniel here could use my truck. And you can specify which squad to start for. Since I noticed that I have a little fuel, we want to find a thing. And in order to jump in, you press Q. Now, maybe I have a friend who wants to drive. You can hold shift and press Q in order to go into passenger seat. Or the back. Or the driver, if it's available. You can also press C to change your seat inside of it. Or if you know the order, you can hold control and press 1 to go back into the driver. So there is a yellow thing here. That is the view. So you want to go here. Now you can't refuel it from the inside. So you have to exit it. And then you have to press E in order to refuel it. And it will automatically attach a hose between it. It will still refuel it, even though I'm not looking at it. As you can see. Now this is not the only way to get a vehicle. If you don't want to deal with the refinery and get the mebats from there if the garage is empty, you can go to the sea dock, which is here. Here you can get vehicles directly from the plane. So we see can we ambulances, we can see some tanks, and here's the R hauler. So if we click one here, we make one in one of these spots. There's also a fuel tank here at the seaport. But what do you want to go? You want to go to the salvage site, right? Now that you're driving, and you want, I know that I want to go north, I might thinking this is north, but if you check the top right, the compass is angle. So what you want to do is press the middle mouse button, and turn it so north is up. That usually helps me in navigation. Now I'm not the best with the navigation. There's the salvage yard, and you can see this person is driving a harvester, which usually isn't available at start, but it's the same principle as before. Got this back here. We can harvest the hammer, but we grab a sledgehammer. The sledgehammer yeah, there's harvest, not possible. I can dump this truck into mine, or I can dump it into this truck, or I can dump it into one of these backups.
dad, you drive your truck. Refinery. Can get past this tree. In order to access the refinery, you don't have to exit the truck. But because of traffic and stuff, you might want to access the refinery from a place where your truck isn't blocking the road. Like this. Now, I want to grab some BMATs so I can make things. Now I can hold shift. And I click to grab a lot, as you can see. I'm just gonna put in the charger into my headset. Let's go some explosives as well. Now that my truck is full of materials, you can see that it's not as fast as it was before, since it has a lot of weight in it. Oh, is that thing you passed by? What a nice lad. Then we can go over here. And we can see this thing again. So it seems they have changed this because it usually wasn't like this before. I find that interesting. That might be a new update that recently came out. Which is interesting, quite interesting. So we what to make things, right? Now, what if I'm gonna drive these things, right, to the front line? How do I know what I need to make for the front line? Well, there's a few ways to do this. One is if you press M, you see there's a C port here that has lots of things inside of it. If you press Tab, like I did, you will see a list of items. So now I can see that at the bottom of this list there is not that many BMATs. It's only 132. And 100 is one truck, right? So we could refill it on BMATs. I know there is not many gas masks, only three. There's not a lot of shirts. I see four and two and two. So you can kind of get a hint of what you need. There's a lot of 40 engineers shirts, 14, and so on. The other way to do it is if you go into the front line, you would see that people have pins and lists and things. So we need VMATs. BM. See some information. I can see here that they need 792 in bandages. So if I want to make these, I go to factory. I go to medicines because it was bandages, right? And each bandages is 80. And I can queue up 4 total. And now uh, maybe I want my squad to have them and not my not personal. Then I can change it to new core and new, new ops. But for this now I'm gonna make it personal. And I can queue that now. And I can see it will take about 7 minutes. 
then they wanted 762 which I think is here or 792 I think it was 762 and I can see I made the four bandages and I can see I only have four out of 80 P mats so I can't make the ammo now but doesn't stop me from going back to the salvage yards, grabbing more salvage and making more B-mats in the refinery. And that's the basic logistics. Now that the bandage is done, the hardest part for me personally is to finding my way here. Because I want to grab them right and then I want to drive there where they needed it in order to fulfill this supply line. Which I'm not gonna do. But I wish you all luck. Please, sir. Uh.